I think that's one of the greatest barriers I would I would anticipate other people are aware of and have gone through and that I've gone through is just being underestimated because you're a native artist or an artist who happens to be native. Hey everybody, it's Ronnie here at Daybreak Star Radio on the station indigenizing the airwaves. And I got to tell you, I'm freaking out right now because I'm, I have the opportunity to bring you guys an interview with the amazing Melody MacArthur. And I'm so excited. And thank you so much for speaking with me. I truly appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> and I appreciate you interviewing me because without the interviewer, there's no interviewee. So thank you. It goes 50-50. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Awesome. So, um... First off, just for people who may not know, and if they don't, I don't know what rock they're living under, but tell us <laughs> a little bit about you, you know, uh, what in great nation you hail from, all that kind of wonderful stuff. Tense Nitsigasun, Melody MacArthur, Ameskwachiwa Skaiga Nutsinia, Treaty 8 Utsinia. Originally, I'm from Treaty 8 territory in northern Alberta, Canada. I am a Woodland Cree First Nation, um, and my name is Melody MacArthur. I am a singer songwriter first and foremost, but I'm also a, a theater actress and an aspiring many other things. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. I'm a very creative person just to the core of my being. I like to draw and I like to write and all kinds of stuff. I'm just that's just me in a nutshell, pretty much. As I like to call it, an artistic entrepreneur. <laughs> this is facts. <laughs> so my first question. Um your music blends pop, R&B, and your indigenous roots. So I'm curious, how do you approach infusing your cultural heritage into your music while staying true you know, to the genres that inspire you? Uh, I've been experimenting and playing around for a while. That is the beauty and upside to being an independent artist is that you can kind of play around with what you want, right, in terms of branding and looks and appearance, but also the way things sound. I've kind of tried to incorporate different things. Sometimes I've used a traditional drum in my music. Sometimes I've used my traditional language for song titles. Um, and recently, I'm just kind of coming more into a place where I'm getting more comfortable with just ex exploring different things like even gospel music uh i've been getting quite a bit of um good views and good following from just doing gospel in my own language and um that's that's kind of like something that connects me with my father my father was a catholic and uh his uh grandmother who raised him attended a residential school aka boarding school so we had that indoctrination of religion in our family but we also had elements of culture and traditional teachings that i'm very grateful for so my dad knew a lot about hunting and trapping and traditional living and he spoke the language fluently so I kind of got a little bit of both worlds, which is a blessing. Um, and that's just some of the ways I try to incorporate in the most authentic way I can. I don't really want to do things that aren't really true to me or uh, my spirit or what I want to do. So I try to do what I can and do my part, especially in terms of revitalizing the language. Um, even just in my uh, social media, right? Um, just trying to use my language, incorporate it in the way I talk or the things that I post, because it is important to me. Um, and I can only do what I know that I can do and what I'm aware of and anything else I need to be taught before I can even touch it, right? So um, there's a little bit of that. There's a balance going on for sure, trying to anyway. <laughs> Definitely sounds like it. That's awesome. So um, Unseated, which is one of my my favorite songs became a very significant number one hit for you reaching, you know, the um, international indigenous music countdown. I was wondering if maybe you could share the story behind this like very powerful song. Uh, so Unseated came to me with the beat first, actually. I was working with uh, my one of my co-producers that I work with a lot. His name is uh, Christian John Munias, a.k.a. CJ Grizz. And he came to me with a beat. And it had just like the sound that you hear as soon as the song starts, you know, with the sing it out, sing it out. <laughs> I was like, that's so cool. Like, because he just has this genius in his mind where he hears things I wouldn't have been able to hear myself, right? So he presented me with the beat and I'm like, my practice this back then was kind of okay let me listen to this I'm gonna go for a nature walk I'm gonna get out in the world just have it blasting in my headphones I'm just gonna be playing the song repeatedly and what I usually did was come up with melodies first like humming it to myself what worked with that beat 
Mm-hmm. And then after I'm like, okay, is this going to be an uppity song? Is this going to be a sad song? What is it going to be? And then I kind of figure out the lyrics after that. Once I know the vibe, I'm like, okay, the lyrics come after. And unseated is is uh, a word in Canada for lands that has not been uh, relinquished through treaty rights or signing of treaty. Um, and so unseated means that. But in the song, I'm kind of referring to our our own personal sense of sovereignty within ourselves, right? And who we are and how society tends to try and take that power away from us. That's kind of like what I'm talking about in terms of unseated within me. That's kind of what it means. But it's a play on words, too, because it does um, identify with a term that um, is specific to Indigenous communities in Canada. You've been nominated again for single of the year at the International Hip Hop Awards for Fires All Over Town, which is another amazing song. And then you won in 2022, which must have been a huge honor. So I'm curious. How have these accolades um, impacted your career and what kind of um, what does this recognition mean to you? It's nice to be recognized by your peers, number one, always. Right. Um, But at the end of the day, it's not it's not everything. It's not the in all be all. And it doesn't always tell who's the most talented and who's the greatest at what they're doing. But it does give me an indication that I am at least kind of on the right track in terms of is the songwriting good? Is the songs good? Am I doing good hooks? Am I leaving an impression with people who listen to the music? You know, um, and so that kind of gives me that recognition. It's more like, I'm going to call it feedback, positive feedback when you get nominated or win an award. But it's not the in all be all. And it doesn't necessarily mean if you're not nominated that you're not doing great things. But to me, it's kind of a feedback in a way because it's coming from peers, right? industry peers or other artist peers to tell you, okay, this is getting some attention. This is what people like. People are digging this. They're vibing. (laughs) I'm on the right track with my sound, with my songwriting, with my lyrics and the style that I'm trying to convey with my artistry. Right. So that to me is kind of what it means to me. And it's, it's a, it's a great honor too. So I'm very appreciative to have another uh, award nomination. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. I'm so busy with other things. I don't even know if I'll get to attend. I hope that I do. Um, cause the nomination just came out of nowhere, which it always <laughs> does, but, uh, November I'm already touring. Right. So I know I'll already be on tour, but I'm just kind of hoping we can swing things where I can swing on in and just check it out and hang out with the people. Right. Cause there's a lot of people going that I love spending time with and I'd love to get to know more. That yeah, definitely, definitely. We went, uh, we went last year and it was just, it was just an amazing time. It was just, it's great to connect with all of those artists and just be in a, be in a room or a building with all of that much talent, especially when they're all indigenous and native, you know what I mean? It's just, mm-hmm. just shows that, you know, we've been held back for too long and it's time to just let us, let us all shine. We can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got a follow up on that with like the indigenous hip hop awards, you know, the, the industry peers are the ones that nominate you, but it's got, what's the feeling like knowing that, you know, th- the people are the ones that voted for this. Like, you know, when you go to the website, like I, I, I know I voted for you today when I went to their website. <laughs> like she and <laughs> voted for me and for DJ Big Res, one of our DJs here. You know, for yes, DJ okay, DJ good, to know. <laughs> good to know. So, is it a different feeling to you, like when you when you know that this award came from the fans? It's a good, it's a good uh, dynamic between the two, right? Because, you know, you got nominated in the first place because the industry is taking notice of something you're doing, but the audience is vibing most with, with you or whoever it is. Right. So that's a really great feeling to have a little bit of both worlds when it comes to that style of uh, organizing an award show. I really do like it. Um, You get to have some say from the people and that's good feedback as well, because the audience really makes you what you are. They decide the fan base, you know, they make you who you are and uh, the growth of it all is just, it's very key. And so it's good to know that people are voting for you. Yeah, it's it's good to have both, best of both worlds, I think. Definitely, definitely. That's why I always tell people when they, they're they like, well, I'm the greatest rapper of all time. And I'm like, no, the fans actually decide that, not you. You don't get that. Yeah. They do. They may make you that. Yeah, yeah definitely. And they decide what you are, right? So mm-hmm. I, got, I get a question a lot about what what style I do, what genre I really am. And the answer to that is I, I do a lot of different styles because I'm influenced by a lot of different music and I have a versatile voice that can do different um, genres of music. Right. So I like to write 
pop. I like to write R&B and I like country music because that's what I grew up with first and foremost. And that's all I knew for many, many years. Um, but the fans, they decide what you are, really. They decide where you fit the most. And honestly, music has become so eclectic in all the genres that it's hard to really say what you really are, especially when you're an independent artist. You have that luxury and that little bit of confusion about who you really are as an artist because you want to just play around and mix things up like look at post malone i just i love post malone he has gone through so many different transitions and that's beautiful to me to be able to successfully do it and be embraced by all those different cultures of audiences right that's amazing because he has one of those voices that can just do it he just can yeah so i i'm inspired by him let's just say <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. So I'm curious, what has, for Bear Grease, what has this experience been like? And how does it differ from, like, you know, the, your general music career? Well, it is a musical, so I get a little bit of all the worlds and a little bit of taste of something different because I'm not a trained dancer. But, I mean, I get by in the show, obviously, because I'm still here. Um, I've always liked acting, and I've had a little element of that with doing music videos and stuff. So I had a little bit of experience. I've done some short films before getting into Bear Grease, and I was actually in a musical theater production when I was younger. So I've had a little taste of the stage acting already, which um, can be quite challenging um, if you don't have that experience at first because it's it's instant audience feedback, right? Not like uh, when you make a movie, a film, you watch the audience after the fact. Yeah. But during a theater production, it's all happening real time. So um, there's there's little chance for error. <laughs> So you really got to know your stuff. And it's so it's taught me some discipline as an artist. It really opened me up as an artist as well. And just confidence and just building myself as an individual and a person. I've gone through a lot of transitions since starting the show in a very, very good, profound way. Because um, you really have to. And uh, by the way, I play Sandy now. Oh. Crystal Lightning. Yeah, Crystal Lightning has now taken over a full-time directorial role. And I now take the part of Sandy. We just talked to her about that, but she didn't tell us who was playing Sandy. She just told us that someone new was playing Sandy. Well, there's yeah, the it's there. Melody McCutcher. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So awesome. in in changing those characters around too, because it, naturally I am like a, a fun person and outgoing, but um for the characters, they still were different than me. And I really had to pull from a place of of internal vulnerability, right? And external vulnerability with my peers and my castmates and really trying to learn how to trust people because that's required when you're being vulnerable on set. You're being vulnerable in a scene. You got to trust your partner, whoever you're working with, to have your back as an actor. So there's been a lot of wonderful, wonderful growth because of Bear Grease. So I'm very grateful to be a part of the production. We got so many good things coming. And it's funny that you would mention you wish it was longer because it actually is getting longer. We've added like three new numbers. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be so great. We even gonna we're even gonna have an intermission, and we start this um we start this run right away here with the Citadel. It's gonna be one of the first major runs of this whole new dynamic in the show, where we have a big break intermission for the audience to go get their drinks and get their food on and have a cigarette and you know mull over what they've seen so far <laughs> and not even expect what's coming next. So we're really excited. Nice. I don't get to talk to a lot of artists that actually, you know, have gone on tour as a musician and have gone on tour in a musical. Which one's more fun? Which one's more difficult? Which one? Yeah, I mean, how's that go? <laughs> they, both, they both have their ups and downs. I will say that because when you're traveling in a huge group, um, obviously, there's going to be challenges around different personalities and just being with each other all the time and learning how to manage that on your own. Because some people are really introverted, right? Even if we are performers, some of us like to be on our own. Some of us like to have our own space. And when you're on tour, that's not always possible. So that's one of the challenges, I guess, that would be probably identifiable to everyone in the group that I work with. Just sometimes wanting your own space. That's one thing. Um, but on the other flip side of that, it's so much fun, too. It's so much fun building that rapport building that bond with your castmates and just having a genuinely good time trying to figure out where you're going getting lost a little bit exploring <laughs> going shopping you know like there's really cool stuff about it for sure it's got a yin and a yang and for the <laughs> flip side going as a musician solo artist because uh, i have done both yeah um it can be definitely a little more lonely <laughs> 
Mm. But you also have your own space and time to be creative and really think things through and go through the show that and tweak things as you as you wish, because it's my show. Right. In that situation, it's my songs. Um, it's the set list that I want to do. It's the songs I don't normally get to sing because everything with Bear Grease is uh, is a set list that's going to be the same every single time. Right. Because mm. it's a show. It's a theater production. But when I go by myself, I'm singing whatever songs I want to because I am an independent artist, including my originals. Right. So. It's just two different dynamics, but both have something wonderful to offer. Both have challenges. And I would say that both are a great experience. That's for dang sure. The music industry, of course, can be extremely challenging, especially for Indigenous artists. I'm curious, what kind of obstacles have you had to, have you faced and you know, how have you overcome them? There's probably, the one that's probably resonates with Indigenous artists the most. And I will say that we are Indigenous um, but I like what I've been hearing lately is more we're artists who happen to be indigenous. Um, I, I kind of like saying it like that better, you know, because then it saying indigenous artists just kind of already puts you in some kind of category that is is you're proud to be in, of course, of course. Um, but you can be stifled by it through the industry because we're so new to this representation that's coming to us. And, and I'm so grateful for it. It's such a beautiful time to be an indigenous artist or artist who happens to be indigenous. Um, but I I've had a lot of challenges and some of them are just are beyond that too. Some of them are just from being a woman. Some of them are just from being really green in the industry and not knowing things going in, which anyone would be, but those are just normal challenges that anyone would probably go through. Um, so those are a lot of the ones that I've had where, you just don't know something until you know something right <laughs> and sometimes you're learning the hard way yeah. like networking and relationships and thinking you know a person and finding out you don't like little things like that just like that are in any workplace to be honest with you um and in terms of uh being native and facing the challenges it's more like i rise to the occasion of well i'm going to show you actually what we can do because I know my abilities and I've honed them for so long, right? I'm very confident in them now. It wasn't always like that, but I am now. And so I know that I'm an artist who happens to be Indigenous and I'm going to show you what Indigenous people are capable of through acting, singing and dancing and songwriting and, you know, just my creativity in general. Because as an independent artist, and I'm sure you know, you're not just doing the thing, you're doing all the things. You're creating the music video concepts, you're creating the art album work concepts you're behind the camera sometimes doing your own photography right like writing we are all the copy, things the underwriting all mm -hmm. of it yep yeah we're <laughs> all the things and i want people to know that about us and i think that's one of the greatest barriers i would i would anticipate other people are aware of and have gone through and that i've gone through is just being underestimated because you're a native artist or an artist who happens to be native, right? I think that's one of the greatest challenges, but I love it too, because get to show them, get to raise the bar and right. show them, you're wrong, well, you're <laughs> wrong, because look what I can do, you know? Um, so it's a good challenge. It's been a good challenge for me, but that is one of the ones I've faced a lot of. And I like what you said about the whole um, indigenous artists and that, yeah, I've noticed that a lot. As we get put in a box, move over. A lot of that is just that over. colonial um, <laughs> attitude, right? A lot yeah. of it's just colonialism and the impacts of westernization, even with the industry and, and how they're impacted by all of it too. Like how they're colonized themselves and they don't even realize it sometimes. To think that just because music is from somewhere else it's different or yeah. possibly subpar but no music is music it doesn't matter if a native person is making traditional flute music music is music whether we're in the mainstream genres or we're not we're still we're still musicians we're still artists who happen to be indigenous are there any artists or producers you know you've particularly enjoyed collaborating with and i want to know who 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 are you wanting to collaborate in the future with? Well, I like so many different styles. So I've done quite a few of um, collaborations in terms of songwriting, co-producing, co-writing. Um, I really like working with my friend, my longtime friend, CJ Grizz. Uh, shout out to him. And I really encourage anyone who's into R&B and hip hop and pop to work with him because he makes phenomenal beats. He's just so talented at that. Um, I've also really enjoyed working with my co-producer, Connor Wharton. Uh, he's not indigenous but he has a really good flair for writing R&B songs and almost any style I bring him he can work
work with it and mix and master it to a T. So I really love working with him. And on my latest album, which is coming out in 2025, it's a totally different sound than people are probably used to. My first album was country. I'm kind of going back to those roots, but I haven't really decided what the label on it's going to be because it has a lot of different elements, R&B. But I've done some features with that that I can announce. I'm not too shy. <laughs> but I work with Bryce Morin on one of the songs. He plays Danny in Bear Grease now. Yes. He was originally Roger, That's but awesome. I've collaborated with him on a song it sounds so beautiful i can't wait for you guys to hear it i collaborated with tyler latender he's from where i'm from and he's not an um an established artist but he has a beautiful voice and i just want the world to hear our people's voices and know right um dream collab hmm <laughs> i've thought about it i've thought about it uh i really like stenjati i like his vibes uh i like what he does i also like antoine x he's just Wonderful, phenomenal, all around shaped as a creative artist. I really like what he does. Um, and there's uh, there's country music artists I want to work with too, like Jade Turner. I've met her a couple of times. She's just oh. really down to earth. She's from here in Canada. She's so beautiful and a great songwriter and a great singer. And I would love to work with her one day too. Um, I have collaborated with and achieved a dream collaboration with Crystal Shawanda because she co-produced my first song on this next album called Last Call. Yeah, I went to Nashville and recorded at her house and she co-produced wow. it with me with her husband. So Dream Collab 1 checked off the list, but she would have been on the list too had I not already checked it off. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> That's awesome. yeah. That's awesome. Like nothing nothing comes easy, right? I, would, I wouldn't say that word. It's not easy, but um, things happen maybe a little faster, maybe yeah. a little less hard when you're on the right track and you're on the right path. Right. Um, that's that's at least what I've been finding with my journey. When I know I'm on the right track, things tend to work out. And if I'm not, they're not working out and I don't fight it too hard. <laughs> 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 I'm willing to put up a fight and work really hard. But, I'm, <laughs> but if I'm getting resistance on something, it might not be meant for me. And I'll know with ease, like the creator's always trying to guide you, right? Ancestors are always trying to guide you. Um, and where I'm at right now feels like the most right place to be. And great things are happening, which leads me to believe that it is the right path and that I'm doing the right thing and following the right um, the right trajectory. Because there's one and it's going up, bud. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the sky. <laughs> so I was wondering if how you balance, you know, that as every day comes and, you know, it's got to be a big ego boost. How do you balance that to make sure that you, you're staying true to your own identity? A lot of that is, is, a, well, it's a few things. So I'll say uh, my parents, for one thing, my father's gone now, may he rest, but he was always a very uh, hardworking man, you know, and, and we didn't have much. So one thing I think that helps me is coming from these humble beginnings. <laughs> like um, sometimes poverty to the point where there was you know there was very little and you knew it um so I kind of stay humble and grounded in that way because I know what it's like to have very little and I know what it means to really work for something because my parents did and uh, I was privileged to have those kind of parents to be there and show me that kind of work ethic um, which I carry with myself now right and that's a part of why there is some success for me is that work ethic and that willingness to just go go learn 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 what I don't know self-educate um, work with whoever I need to work with, be professional as I can, always show up on time, always show up on time and, and be ready before you need to be ready. You know, like always practicing, even in my off time, which doesn't really exist, <laughs> practicing all the time so that I'm always on and I'm ready for just about anything. Right. Because with showbiz, anything could come up at any time and you want to be able to say yes, because you were ready for it. Um, so that's like having all my ducks in a row is another thing that I was always taught. And with, with that humility, it's it's part of the native teachings, right, is to understand, to stay grounded and know that everything that you're gifted with, because this is a gift for me, it was given to me and I'm grateful for it by creator to write songs, to sing the way that I do, to be able to act and dance and to be able to share my gifts with people in a, in a authentic way, but also to have the confidence to share it the way that I do and be open um, with my audience. Cause I'm very, I'm a very open person. Um, and, and, and that comes from that, 
native way of teaching of to be grounded all the time and be your authentic self. And, and when you're wrong, you say you're wrong and you admit that you're wrong and you know that you're not perfect and you know, you're not better than anybody. Um, because I, I am aware that I could be anywhere in the world, you know, in, 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 in terms of a negative place too, I'm highly aware with all the trauma that I have, I could be or go any which way. And I'm grateful that I choose to uh, express myself through music and art and that it takes me to where it does. But how I stay grounded in humility is knowing that it's bigger than me. It's more than me. It's not about me. Um, it's about what can I do to make the world a better place or inspire others to want to do the same. That's what it's really about, you know? So that really helps me stay humble because I know it's more than this person right here. I'm a part of it and I'm a vessel for it, but it was a gift. And I need to honor it properly. So I think that's what keeps me most grounded is that teaching that I have, that spirituality. What advice would you give Indigenous youth who inspire to make it in, say, the music industry or theater or any of the art? You know, you know, to be honest, because there's possibly more people than just those involved in the arts listening to your program. Um, I would say that you could apply it anywhere in life to be willing to do things afraid. Um because I guarantee you I have. I might come across as very outgoing and very confident, but it took a lot to get me here. A lot of stepping outside of my comfort zone, a lot of being the only Native woman in the room or just Native person in general in the room, a lot of times and being uncomfortable. But I like to say, here's where the comfort zone is, but this is where the magic happens. You know, it's outside of that zone. And um, I've done a lot of things scared, scared of failure, scared of, scared of rejection, scared of humiliation. Um, but it's the only way to grow and it's the only way to get better, um, because how can you really know how to um, level up if you've never gone for it you know so my biggest biggest piece of advice to everyone into how I got where I really truly am is of course work ethic um, and willing to work hard and try new things but number one has been stepping outside of my comfort zone going places I didn't think I could be being in spaces I didn't think I could exist um, or succeed but doing it anyway and that doesn't mean it was always successful <laughs> Um, but even the failure is growth. I I've had so much growth in just trying and applying for almost anything I could think of because you, you never know what the other person on the other side of making these decisions wants. You think, you know, based on colonial attitude or things you've been taught, things you've been shown over the years, especially if you were born in the nineties, like us, like, man, we came from a rough time, <laughs> Where where we just we were so um, boxed in by all these different things, including gender and sexuality and how we look in our appearance and our weight. And a lot of that has gotten so much better for our youth. And I'm really proud of that. I'm so happy for them to be existing in this time and age. I know it's not perfect. I know there's still bigotry and there's still hatred, but it's it's better than it's ever been, in my opinion, just growing up as a teenager and youth in the time that I did. Things are so much better and they have a voice and I hope that they use it. Um, so that's my biggest piece of advice is if you're afraid, do it anyway. Try it anyway. Lastly, just if you could let our audience know where they can um, be able to see you maybe in concert soon or yeah. where Bear Grease is going to be touring at. So uh, I know that Bear Grease is uh, finishing up this residency here that we're doing in Edmonton. So we'll be here for the entire month of October. And then we go on a British Columbia tour, which we're very, very excited about because we have yet to really, really go out west. Um, at least to this extent, we're excited to hit all these communities and get there. And then um, we take a little bit of a break after December, but we are coming to Ottawa. Ottawa, Ontario for our Christmas run. We're having a Christmas special back at the National Arts Center in December. So look out for that. But follow us, follow the Bear Grease pages and you'll be able to know where we're going all the time. Um, and you can follow me at Melody MacArthur Music. Well, that's all my handles. The only social media I don't have is tic, uh, not TikTok, uh, Twitter, a.k.a. X. I've just, I just can't do it. I can't either. <laughs> I've tried many times. <laughs> and I, just can't, I can't vibe with it. I don't know, but I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. And all my music is on the things, you know, all the streaming things, the Apple and the Spotify and all that. So you can find me. Um, 
E L O D Y, like the song Melody MacArthur. Well, I want to thank you so much for speaking with me. I appreciate it. And um, if anybody ever has any questions, if you're listening and you like what you hear from me and you got questions, just send me a message. Tell me where you heard my story. Tell me where you heard me talk, and let's let's shoot the shoot the you know what <laughs> about anything related to making it industry whatever i'm i'm a, i'm a pretty open book i don't harbor secrets to the way things are done or how i've done things i'm open cuz when i win and everybody wins and when you guys win i win too